Hello YouTube and welcome back to Let's Play Bloom Tower Defense 5 Steam. In this episode, I'm going to be using the Buccaneer with um, a combo of a boomerang thrower, possibly. Uh, I just realized, now that I said it, that because I have the specialty building for the Buccaneer, um, that means it's got great, great power because of the, um, because of the camo lead popping ability, but that means that because I don't have the specialty building for the boomerang thrower, that it does not have dual Ranga or the, um, what the much will call it, the, um, the thing where it comes back or goes back out again after it hasn't popped everything. Um, so at the moment, technically, the boomerang thrower doesn't have any camera detection, but as soon as I upgrade the Buccaneer uh, into Grape Shot and then into the uh, Crow's Nest, then the boomerang thrower will have um, camera detection. However, I, I don't really need to upgrade it to that right now. Um, because I don't really need any extra camo detection, considering there's no camo blooms for quite a while. And then the boomerang thrower doesn't really need any extra benefit, I guess, for a little bit. I don't know. I probably bought the boomerang thrower a little bit too early, because I didn't really need it right now. Um, but that's fine. Um, I could just wait for it or whatever. Um, and then, what else? Um, I'll probably probably go with maybe some ninja monkeys for some anti-moab maybe I don't know. we'll see um so it's only 255 for the crow's nest which again is an upgrade that i don't actually need at the moment um and you know what i've got these ratodactyls uh well actually no i'll save them for the rink um because i remember hearing that, that was a good stage to use it on and it does seem like a good stage to use it on. So then now I'm just going to be saving up for the 2255 cash uh, for the destroyer um, to really increase the power of the uh, Buccaneer. Since that is my specialty building, um, uh, building my, my, special, my specialty building tower or monkey or whatever because it's a Buccaneer. Um, so it's not technically a tower because it's a boat and it's got a monkey on it. It's not technically just a monkey, because it's not just a monkey, it's a, it's a boat with the monkey, and technically the monkey's not the one firing the attacks, it's the cannon, which, I don't know, anyways, um, so yeah, the boomerang thrower, uh, at the moment is kind of just a random little support, because it doesn't have any upgrades, uh, not even any double ranga type of thing, so, yeah, it's really just there for support, and, um, let me know what you guys think about maybe either fast forwarding to the beginning or starting on like round 30 or something. I know some of you have already said that uh, it probably would be better just to start over like round 30 or something. Just to skip through this early beginner part um, since most of these tracks are not going to be very difficult early on. Um, so it's kind of just not really a waste of time but just you know it's very simple, very boring. Um, the only problem I kind of have with that is if something does happen and I'm like either not recording or just not paying attention and then gotta edit that in or whatever and then it's like meh, nah, editing. But, um, and then another thing is I don't want the videos to be too short um, because especially with the autoplay round and on this new laptop or this new desktop, not new desktop, it's a new computer. It is a desktop I had a laptop before. Anyways, just on this new computer, um, it does run much faster so these videos are much faster and much shorter than they used to be. Um, like if I was to record this on my old laptop and I didn't have the auto send wave, it would probably take about 30 minutes uh, or so um, to get through a uh, hard mode. But now it's closer to 20 um, or 15 if I do it right. So uh, it also depends on how close my uh, how close my towers are to the beginning of the track. Um, so let's see. Uh, we've got more money. Do you want to go with that one or boomerang uh, or bionic boomer? Um, because yeah, because I've only got one glaive, um, and it doesn't have the ability to go back out if it doesn't hit its max cap. Um, then I'm actually going to go with the glaive ricochet because that uh, I believe is less benefited. Uh, by oh, and now my audio is messing up. Hold on. Okay, I think it's back. That was weird. I don't know why it does that. I guess this game still has a few bugs in it. Um, eh, that's fine. Um, I'll just have to remember that when I'm editing or whatever. Just that the the game started messing up a little bit. 
but, um, eh, maybe I'll just throw it in there. I don't know. It wasn't very long. But anyways, um, so the Glaive Ricochet, I'm going to go with the Glaive Ricochet rather than the uh, Bionic Boomer on this one because the Bionic Boomer was really powerful due to the double Renga and the ability to send it out one more time if it didn't reach a pop count because then that, like I've said before, essentially is like almost four times as strong as normal, um, depending on how you do it. Uh, about four times as strong as normal against um, against Moab class blues, that's for sure. Uh, but now that it doesn't have those upgrades, um, then it's kind of just down to the basic Glaive Ricochet or the Bionic Boomer. And while the Bionic Boomer is still great, um, it's still useful. Uh, it is reduced by quite a bit um, because of it, um, because of not having the specialty building. So then I'm going to go with the Glaive Ricochet because it's less, um, less worse <laughs> because, uh, uh, even though it doesn't have double Renga, um, that's basically cutting it in half, uh, which, again, even on Bionic Boomer, that's essentially cutting its effectiveness in half, but these other special, other side of the specialty building where, uh, it'll go one more time if it's not, um, done reaching its pop cap, uh, that doesn't really affect the Glaive Ricochet, because the Glaive Ricochet kind of always reaches its pop cap, um, so it, yeah, it's not really that affected by that side of things. Um, and I'm actually going to throw down a Ring of Fire right here, because I really want to. <laughs> I want to just get rid of uh, any balloons that are starting off right near the beginning of the track. Um, I don't know, it doesn't have camo detection, so I think I will actually throw down a Monkey Village. Um, and just give a general assist uh, with these um, you know, jungle drums and all that. Because for whatever reason, I can never just buy a radar scanner. I just always have to, uh, always have to buy the jungle drums first. But anyways, let's see. Um, a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Um, so now it has camo detection, which really is only there for the ring of fire, because all the other towers had camo detection. Um, let's see. So I do. Ah, oh, dang it. Um, I do need some. Moab popping. So let's set that to strongest, faster firing. Uh, this does not look good. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to pop the Moab. Um, the destroyer is going to be helpful, definitely. Um, but <laughs> I'm not 100% sure how well I'm going to do on this. Alright, um, and of course it goes the, the shorter path. But uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I can pop one Moab fairly decently. Um, and then of course that. Ring of Fire actually does kind of reduce the effectiveness of the Boomerang Tower uh, due to the fact that it's just kind of popping everything um, for the most part. Obviously not everything, but it pops a lot. So, um, let's see, I might just go with some 3-1 Sniper Monkeys because I don't want to waste money on the Night Vision Goggles if it has camo detection due to two different sources. Um, so I might just go with 3-1 uh, Sniper Monkeys. Um, like I said, just so I'm not wasting that, you know, 290, which is not a very large amount, uh, just to get to the, um, just to get to the semi-automatic rifle. Uh, plus, if it's stronger, then that means that, you know, it's better or whatever, I don't know. Um, there's not really a good case that I can make for, uh, for wanting a 3-1 rather than a 2-3 um, on the Sniper Monkey. Let's see, I'm gonna go for three of them, and then maybe save up for one, uh, four one sniper monkey, probably this one that I'm building now. I might save up for a three one, or a four one, just because it looks cooler or whatever. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then those two rings of fire should definitely be helpful against normal type blends. Um, ceramic could still be a problem, but, um, I've got the, uh, I've got the whatchamacallit, I've got the snipers to help out with any kind of ceramic balloons, as well as Moab. Um, obviously if there's, a, if there's a lot of Moab and ceramic balloon, then that's going to be uh, a bit more difficult. But, um, it's actually, let's see, how far is the range on that? Probably put it right at the bottom of its range, um, just so that I know that I'm getting some poppage right there. Don't need to worry too much about it. And now I kind of want to replace the um, the monkey village now I do really want that um, that uh, what should we call it that ring of fire to get good range right here because I want to make sure that I'm popping like all over the map 
all the time, uh, meaning like I don't want to give any room for the uh, for the regrow blooms because this is like my third attempt <laughs> recording this track, and uh, regrow blooms are a lot more difficult than I was expecting. Um, specifically when I have the uh, when I have the uh, balloon chipper because that that's just not great for regrow blooms. Um, and yeah, those rings of fire, pretty good. Um, four of them on the map. I mean, obviously you can, you can count. I know you can see that I have four on the map. But um, oh, let's see, how much range is that on the right side? Because I tend to forget about putting towers on this right side because I'm always expecting all the all the balloons to be popped earlier on. Um, and I want to put them at these corners so that more of the track is, is within its range and all that. Um, this Buccaneer, honestly, I, I don't really need it right now because it's not bad, it's just uh, with all these rings of fire it's kind of getting overshowered or overshowered? Uh, overshadowed um, uh, I'm sure it is helpful obviously especially against like a Moab class balloon but now that I have those three um, those three uh, sniper monkeys then it's less important um, let's see probably place one right here uh, so yeah, now that I have uh, snipers, I mean, they're going to be popping the Moab pretty well. And then I've got these rings of fire all over the map that will just sort of do constant AoE all over the place. So I think this is actually a pretty good strategy, just having a bunch of rings of fire uh, in combination with the, um, with the uh, snipers in order to get the, the Moabs. I just need to remember how expensive they are so I can buy them all at once, just because I enjoy doing that. Um, and then there's going to be a few towers, or a few Moabs that actually make it pretty far, but that's why I've got those rings of fire on the on the end side, on the, on the back side, I guess. Um, I still don't have a crippled Moab, but that's not super important, because uh, my snipers are already pretty good on their own, so I don't really need to worry too much about having a uh, crippled Moab, even if it would be helpful. Um, and then if they all had triple Moab, that'd be kind of nice, but not a big deal, because that's really expensive. Alright, um, let's see, I kind of want to cover more of the map, rather than doubling up some of the Rings of Fire, because I don't want to, don't want to worry about that too much. It's specifically for the anti-regrow anti that I'm doing this, um, because if I have these all over the map, then the regrow blues won't have enough time or won't have any space to actually regrow um, because they'll just be constantly under attack. They'll be under fire, if that makes, if you if you know what I, uh, anyways. Um, so let's see, I, I kind of feel like just spamming more and more rings of fire, like all over the map, because um, that sounds like a good idea in my opinion, but I don't actually know. Um, and then of course I do want it to be within the range of this monkey village, but that monkey village does have pretty impressive range, so I shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Uh, let's put this about here, um, so that it has a bit more of a stronger AOE, rather than just like up at the corner where it's not going to be using it as much. Because for these rings of fire, I really don't want to put them like right at the corner, even though a few of them are right at the corner. Um, but I want to get more track within this range, mostly like within the edge of its range, rather than like right at the center of its range. Um, it's looking like I'm going to need more, <laughs> because uh, now that the BFBs and all them are moving in, um, it's going to be a bit harder for the snipers. Um, so the Rings of Fire are actually helpful against the Moabs, like it's not like an Ice Tower or a Glue Gunner where it doesn't even affect the Moabs. Um, or the Moab layer class blooms. Um, these rings of fire do actually do damage to it. It's just a matter of how much damage, uh, which is the issue. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I do like the look of them being all over the place rather than just like in one big line or something. Because then I know that I'm really, uh, I'm really defended all over the map, which is a very nice feeling. Place this one right about here. That way it's even more covered right there. I'm essentially going to be placing one like everywhere that I can, in as many corners and turns as I can. 
Um, it's just, again, I don't want to double them up too much. Otherwise, it feels like it takes away from their effectiveness, but it probably doesn't. And the ring, Rings of Fire are probably doing a lot of damage to these Moabs now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but the snipers are good and all, but I think it really is these Rings of Fire that are that are covering it more. Let's put this one about there. And whenever I'm, whenever anyone is uh, placing the Rings of Fire. Um, or specifically the attack shooter that will turn into the Rings of Fire, you've got to remember that the range will increase with the um, with the upgrades that you give it, unless you just don't want to play, build the upgrades for whatever reason, which is kind of understandable. Um, like, build the range upgrades, not, <laughs> not the Ring of Fire upgrade. Um, you got to remember that the range does increase, so you can put it so that the bottom of the range, or the, the edge of the range, is like just under the track, and then just give it those extra range to cover the track. Um, because you don't need like all of the range on a certain piece of track in order to pop the balloons more efficiently. Like just as long as some of the range is on some of the track, then it'll be able to to pop them and all that. All right, I've actually got a ton of money right now, so let's build a uh, wow, a couple Moab. There we go. So that's going to be helpful with slowing down the uh, Moab class balloons. And I think I'm going to try. Wow, there's so many Moabs. <laughs> Um, I think I'm gonna try to, uh, to build a second one, maybe? I don't know. I think I probably just built that one because it was there, <laughs> because I realized, like, oh, hey, I wasn't keeping up with my money, you know? I've got a ton that I can use. Um, so I think maybe just one is enough, but... Wow, there's a lot of Moabs, and a lot of rings of fire to come back them. Um, let's place this one about here. I know that's a bit close, and probably not the best place to put it with the current strategy that I'm using. Um, let's put this one about here. And I did not actually have enough range to fully complete that right away. It's not a big deal, I didn't have to wait that long. Um, and then what's really great is that the rings of fire right now are kind of like, um, <laughs> uh, are kind of like uh, Glaive Ricochet in a sense where once you know that they can pop one tier of bloom, they can pop all the tiers of the blooms. Like, once you know that they can get the Moab down, um, because they're just all over the map, and they all have pretty good pierce, relatively, um, then you know that they can take down the world, <laughs> essentially. Um, now, what my biggest issue is right now is what am I going to do about the ZOMG, because that's going to be a bit more difficult to take down than a, than a Moab or BFB. Um, and I, it will only be one, so the snipers will be a bit better at stopping them. And I do have a group of Moabs, so that's going to be helpful uh, in slowing it down. Um, let's put this one like right here. I think that's going to be my last one. Yeah. So it is very nice to And of course it doesn't go the long way. <laughs> Why would it? But um, I do have all those rings of fire that are very useful. Um, and where is it going to burst? There we go. And then, yeah, that should be fine. It should probably be fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, because then all the other rings of fire are going to pop in. Nice, Maze Olympian. Finally did that stage with uh, a strategy that I was not expecting. Alright, um, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.